quick little episode from the Ed Ed here. I thought I'd talk again a bit about my 1937 Montgomery Ward's farm radio. This fellow is 6 volt powered. Um, back in the day, of course, uh, um, America was still developing its electrical grid and so forth, and a lot of farms, if you're outside the city limits any distance, didn't have uh, AC uh, electric power, so you pretty much had a well, you know, if you wanted to listen to a radio or something like that, it was going to be with a battery and maybe a wind generator, uh, maybe uh, a gas generator, maybe you took your batteries into town and got them recharged. And previous to the development of uh, mechanical vibrators, the really early radios used multiple battery packs. Uh, you'd have batteries that would produce your grid bias and uh, filament power and so forth, so they'd be like you, you you hear uh, them referring to A batteries, B batteries, and C batteries, and so forth. And the nice thing about the mechanical vibrators that were developed is um, it allowed you just to use a single battery. And it, the, the mechanical vibrator is basically just a mechanical switch, um, very much like a, a buzzer, a door bell buzzer. Um, just mechanically makes and breaks the, the circuit real fast. And then the uh, transformer and the radio uh, will still step up your voltage and then in this case the uh, mechanical vibrator had a second set of contacts to uh, mechanically rectify the, uh, the AC back to DC so you didn't have to use a, um, a rectifier uh, tube in this guy and it's it's kind of a it's, it's actually a, a remarkable level of development that you got to this point so I'll show you the um, the um, vibrator here and kind of go through how it works and, and, and I just find it so cool. This is the vibrator uh, on my uh, old farm radio and it's just such a fascinating thing I think I'd I'll open it up and explore it. I had to, had to cut this guy open in order to um, in order to unstick the contacts and so it's just taped in place. I'll open this guy up and, and show you the contacts on this guy and, and kind of explain about how it works. So as like I was saying earlier, I actually cut this can open in order to get the uh, get at the um, fellow's contacts and clean them up enough, pry them apart and everything. It was easy enough to open up just a Dremel tool. We'll very carefully sawing this really thin metal, and it'll just open right up. It's lined with kind of a foam rubber of the day, and it's holding up pretty well. Uh, I'm surprised that it hasn't like decayed to, to nothing. And the guy itself is, it's literally not much more than a glorified um, doorbell buzzer or doorbell. It has, you know, two contacts to make and break the circuit for the um, input side of the transformer. And then on the other side, there are another set of contacts that are, act as a rectifier. So it's a mechanical rectifier. And then up above is this contact here is just uh, basically what would be the doorbell buzzer contact that opens and closes the circuit when the uh, um, the, um, the little metal plate is attracted to the uh, the coil and cuts power and turns power on and so forth and causes it to vibrate back and forth and just which is a simple mechanical resonance there and this is literally as simple as that and like I say this foam here is just for noise Suppression. I'm surprised it just doesn't cook in its own juices because it's obviously got to be well insulated in there. And it's got to get really hot, and you would think, you know, just the ozone being developed in there would just destroy these, you know, contacts chemically. The the thing that I find fascinating about this is that this is a mechanical device, and those circuit uh, contacts are open and closed an incredible number of times uh, per second, and these things will run for years. And there was quite a science behind these things. I mean, it was quite a technology quite an industry that was developed for these guys and uh, for instance I found on archive.org a really nice book on the design characteristics and, and how you design and, and produce these things and so forth and I'll, I'll put a link on that in case you're interested. And I'd like to uh, show you my latest little project here of trying to capture the motion of this mechanical vibrator on this 1937-38 um, um, uh, airline Ward's Airline um, farm radio. It's a it's a radio that runs on uh, six volts, a uh, six volt battery here, and uh, the power is chopped mechanically with this uh, mechanical vibrator, 
to uh, produce alternating um, current for the transformer so the radio could run uh, just like it would otherwise on a wall, wall outlet but uh, running on DC it uh, what I've rigged up here is a, a strobe that is uh, just kind of some junk I salvaged out of a um, it was kind of a high-speed balancing machine and the strobe was part of the balancing mechanism so uh, it had a, a 600 volt power supply, a 12 volt power supply um, other bits and pieces and then I rigged up real quick here um, a um, little trigger circuit with a transistor and a uh, FET and so forth to trigger the SCR that's actually in the uh, strobe itself which is in this uh, can here pointing at the uh, strobe at the um, vibrator. So, a bit of an electrocution special here I suppose. Some of the little issues I had was uh, I had an opto uh, isolator uh, that uh, I had gotten out of a package that had been laying around an old uh, Radio Shack package that had no re refund, no um, returns, so it, it seemed to act flaky and just stopped working. I eventually gave up and used a uh, thought opto as a uh, um, power isolation, you know, I don't want 600 volts and anything else. I might later on package this all up in like a, um, with a 555, I did play around with the 555 there. But at the moment I'm just using a function generator, which uh, I haven't used in years, it's nice to see it still runs. The, um, fortunately the, the fine control on this guy isn't working, I don't know why, so I can't do a fine control, I only can get coarse speeds, it looks like 100 hertz uh, seems to be working well for this guy. The Mallory uh, design manual for um, these vibrators indicates that they probably run on average probably about a hundred and uh, uh, seventeen Hertz I believe so I, I think I got it dialed pretty close to that so here it is basically it's the here's the vibrator in all the glory and we'll set this guy up and see if we can get some footage of this guy uh, frozen in action and see how those contacts and so forth move back and forth to get an idea uh, how this thing works and, and uh, I, I don't expect I'll be able to see arcing or anything like that on it the strobe will probably wipe out the ability to see that but you might be able to see how it rocks back and forth how the contacts um, hit and maybe be able to detect uh, them bouncing or something like that and overall it's just a fun project this thing kind of fascinates me you know back in the day they didn't have you know the sort of solid-state electronics we do today so to easily convert um, AC to DC and then DC back to AC and so forth and doing it mechanically here it just fascinates me that it actually could be made to work at all and, and it works as well as it does and actually it's uh, quite an amazing thing what folks were able to do with the resources the technology they had available to them so let's set this guy up and play with it some Okay, so here's the radio running at, uh, with the uh, cover of the vibrator removed. 
And of course, so you're hearing mostly the vibrator. And the function generator is running at about 100 hertz. And the Mallory um, vibrator design manual appears to indicate that a lot of these guys will run at about like 117 hertz, something like that. So I think I'm pretty close. The um, the uh, speed adjustment, uh, fine resolution on the function generator, that knob doesn't seem to be working at the moment. I'm not sure why, so I can't dial it in a little bit closer. I'm kind of limited to large jumps in speed, and it looks like this speed of about 100 hertz seems to be working pretty good. It's pretty close to what it's actually running at, and it gives you a good feel for how the contacts are, are, are striking, everything's moving back and forth, and how the little kind of the weight of the magnet is being flung back and forth there. And it's really just kind of cool. It, it, the, the, the brightness from the flash is too great to probably, um, you know, see any arcing. But it really gives you a good feel for what this thing's doing. I'm surprised that the camera doesn't seem to be having any synchronization troubles with all these flashes. I thought it would probably just not work at all. So, not too bad overall. But so, you know, a little rig up uh, my um, strobe system here, kind of learned a little bit about that, and I've had a, a fun little project of seeing this strobe in action on this um, vibrator. So, kind of a fun little project. Thanks for watching.